How do? So this was a little ride that we did on uh, Sunday. I was invited out by a pal of mine and thought why not get out there and have a ride out with some lads and at the same time we can test out the uh, three cameras. Uh, it, it should have been four. I did have a GoPro Hero 7 mounted uh, facing me as the rider. However, as soon as I got back, checked it, it crashed. Um, it recorded all the audio and no footage, which was absolutely terrible. And I don't know what's up with it, whether it was a memory card or what. So I've got to have a play with that one. So I did end up with just having the three cameras left to test. And I thought I'd put a bit of a video together. Uh, riding along with the three cameras and the three cameras we've got are the GoPro Mini 11 which is mounted to the very front of my bike and then we have the Insta360 X3 uh, so that footage that you can see there now that's the Mini 11 mounted right above the headlight on the front of the bike that's the Insta360 X3 mounted on a pole um, and the pole sticks up uh, about a foot above my head on that one and that's the Senna 50C which is mounted to the camera so that footage there from the Mini 11 uh, was in 4K 30fps that's the footage there from the Senna and the footage from the Insta. So the Insta was set, uh, when that exported, that was 1080p 30 as well. And then what I've done in Premiere Pro is we've used the 4K settings from the GoPro and then got the Insta and the Senna footage to match that, so it's slightly upscaling. But I just thought I'd do a little bit of a video um, and then you can see for yourself, the three. And the colour does look slightly better on the centre there. I haven't done any grading on this and I've just recorded them as flat on both the GoPro and on the Insta. So they all have image stability. Um, the bad thing about the uh, centre is you go any higher than 1080 and you lose the ability to have any stability which is why I've had to go for 1080 so I still get it stabilised and then just do a bit of upscaling and we'll see what that does once it's uploaded I've had to turn the audio um, from the cameras down because the audio that's captured on both the Insta and the Mini 11 is quite noisy and the audio that's captured on the Senna is absolutely fantastic but it cuts out any noise you can just see as I'm pulling up here because for that weird moment I thought I'd left my keys in my top box that just gives a, a decent overall view and you can see the pole there slightly and I checked and no, I've not left my keys in my top box and then uh, we set off again and I've had to turn the sound down as well because in a moment you'll hear me speaking to uh, Zach as I get round the corner uh, explaining why I pulled over but then because I'm shouting loud to him it was really loud um, so you'll hear now I thought I left my keys in my top box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there we go, that's the Mini 11 on the front. The Senna, which is attached to the helmet. And the Insta, stuck on a pole. Now, it does show me bobbling about quite a bit, but you can see that the, the lock on the landscape is really good, as is that of uh, the Mini 11. The stability on the Mini 11 is awesome. And the stability on the centre 
Um, I think it does a really good job. It, it's got a, a little bit of a weird glitch on the centre when you see you turning your head to the left or to the right, um, and that just comes across as a bit. You can just notice it's a bit glitchy. It sort of it, it sort of holds the frame and then pulls it back round. It's got a weird, weird way of doing it. So this is just a sample um, of editing uh, three lots of cameras together. Small sample of um, me doing audio from the Senna, captured directly. So the downside to being out with a big group and uh, messing about and having so many cameras, we just pulled into holes there. I had my vegetarian breakfast because I'm a good lad, and then. I've just noticed. Oh shit! I've recorded it all in uh, single lens, not in 360 on Insta. This is a bit of a pisser. Now the editing I've done in, in Premiere Pro, and once you get your um, audio synced up uh, and you sync the videos, it, it's dead simple then to choose which which camera view you're watching. There's a little bit more to the Insta because you've got to then go into the Insta app, oh, rush, play rush, it rush. back, decide on your key points that you're having, um, and, and then export that footage so then you can import that in. Um, I believe you can do it in Premiere Pro with a plugin, so I haven't tried that yet. So this is using the Insta 360 software um, directly on uh, my phone, um, and then you sort of play it back decide which bits you you know you want your keyframes on or, or whatever you're doing with the footage export it and then you can bring it into Premiere Pro and just use it as another camera source so I've got three camera sources set up and as you're playing it back you just literally choose which camera view you want to you want to show you can just see there that I'm realizing that I've left my phone in my pocket which I don't normally do and I put it in my top box and I'm expecting my phone to come flying out of my pocket So this is a run out that we did um, from Hawes up to um, what's known as Devil's Bridge. Anybody from the northwest will know where that is. And it turned out to be a met, wet and miserable day, which is another thing that you'll see on this footage as well. That the Senna, the lens stays a lot clearer um, with the moisture on it, it because it's a, it's a very tiny lens on there. You can just see them spots appearing there on the um, Insta. And also, when it flicks back to the Mini 11, you can start to see the droplets start forming on the lens. Um, there you can just see them droplets forming on there. Now obviously if you're in a, a, a bit of a rainy uh, condition, but if you go back to the centre, um, and it's, it's a lot clearer. You see them spots on there now. Now, as I was playing back the Insta footage, the, there wasn't much, to be fair, um, that it were worth uh, looking back for. Um, with a bit of hindsight, um, I'd have gone up front, so I'd have ca I captured the guys. I'd never been out with these guys before, um, so this was my first time out with them. So I held back a bit because I didn't know, you know, who, who, whose riding ability was what. Um, and we tried to capture a little bit of them going off into the distance and it was more of an excuse for me to play out with having three cameras on um, so I'm riding my Suzuki B-Strom and I did do a little bit of um, vlogging as it were earlier on in the day which I'll post as a separate video uh, talking about the, the B-Strom and my ownership for five years but I just thought I'd do this separate video um, that you can have a look at and see um, what it what it's like for the three separate cameras having them set up and my thoughts from the day so one of the first things is the Mini 11 did superb right they're currently on on sale at the minute 199 quid and that includes a 50 quid subscription to um, the GoPro where you can up, upload your um, footage 
and it's supposed to do it overnight. It's slow, it's painful, it's crap, don't like it, doesn't work. Um, <clears throat> other problems with the Mini 11, it sort of went flat and then it just wouldn't charge, wouldn't power on, wouldn't do anything. Um, also the door on it, it's not um, removable, so on the Hero 7 that I've got, you can actually take the door off and you can power it as you go so you can leave it running all the time although it's not exactly waterproof you could do the same on the mini 11 but it would have a bit of a flap flapping around so you'd have to do something about that um, I, I guess a, the, the old inflator balloon and push it around it trick would probably work on that one so yeah it wasn't over hammered the footage from the, the mini 11 I thought was you know really good and the stability you can't argue with it uh, the Insta360, that's fully waterproof. Again, you can ride and charge with that, um, but it wouldn't make it fully waterproof. And if you've got it stuck out on a pole, that'd be hard work. And you'd also, you'd see the wire. It wouldn't be invisible. Um, so probably better to have a, a, another battery. At 4K, they didn't have a problem. Um, and I managed to get quite a bit of footage out of, uh, out of them in total with a bit of a charge when we stopped off um, at a cafe. The, the Senna, for me, out of the three, that's the one that wins hands down because it's so easy. You can see that tank bag that I've got on in front of me and I have a power bank sat in that tank bag which feeds directly from the bike so that's constantly being charged and then you can get a power cable from your power bank plug it into your centre and ride all day and it'll record as long as you've got a big enough memory card in there and you can still use it for listening to music or, or whatever else you want to do and record audio and the audio that it records is superb and um, I've got other videos that anybody wants to see it on there it cuts out almost all background noise it, it, it's almost a shame that you can hardly hear the engine um, it does make it really quiet but the audio that it captures is great so for just if you were just gonna have the one camera you've no messing about with having to have um, separate audio or getting an, uh, you know with the Hero 7 and you've got to get another adapter that you can plug a mic into and then have another mic inside your helmet and all that faff with the center you don't have any of that hassle and if that's what you want and you want just you know something for vlogging um, you know, it does really well at 1080p. Um, it'd be interesting to see what this is like once I export it and upload it to YouTube um, because it's slightly upscaled to 4K, as is that um, Insta footage. Um, the Insta, again, for me, brilliant bit of kit. Um, I have done a video the first time I went out with it and I mounted it on the engine guards um, and it was on a short um, pole about 70 centimeters so with the, it was probably stuck out um, you know less than a meter which is the camera with the stick and the and the mount all in one I had it stuck on the on the crash guards and like I said I have done a video um, before about that and you can see that on there and I got much better stock footage or b-roll footage or whatever you want to call it from that and I got side on views and plus you could do forward views um, sticking it up on the pole was a little bit restrictive um, it, well, because I was out with other people I didn't want to try it but the idea is it's a three metre pole um, and maybe on some of these sort of roads you could do a couple of hundred yards with it stuck up, up but um, I wouldn't go three metres it would be like a fishing pole bending over but maybe at two metres high and then you could try that for getting that view going down and, and having it coming out the back so it would actually be like a drone following you um, that would be really good. Mm, not sure if I'm so happy about the way that the actual subject, if I'm the subject, um, the rider, stays so still. And I mean, if you compare it to the stability that you get there, and especially compare it to that, I mean, that looks so smooth, it's unbelievable. So the Mini 11 for me wins with the smoothness and the stability, especially because it was at 4K. Um, the Insta. You know, it, it looks at the landscape, it's, it's perfect, but just trying to keep me in shot, that's where you can see where it's just jittering about a little bit. 
and it did seem to perform a lot better when he had it on the obviously the shorter ball it wasn't moving about as much and the bit that it was moving it, it, it caught with that quite well so yeah I, I guess it all down to um, what you want from a camera um, you know these are the sort of three um, latest cameras out there that I guess you could you could get if you're going to strap something to your motorbike um, there is other options as well but the three of the, these are the three of the most popular so you've got the Mini 11 the GoPro Mini 11 um, the Senna and the Insta 360 X3 and they're all good at one particular thing um, which one you'd, you'd choose just for yourself I don't know I know the uh, Mini 11 you can't connect connect uh, an external microphone to it so that means if you did want to use it for vlogging you'd have to um, have a separate device for recording your audio whether you used your phone and connected a microphone to your phone and then in post-production added that audio in and synced it up or you can have a standalone video uh, sorry audio recorder um, I've got one the zoom I think mine's a zoom h1 I think I've still got um, so you, you could have a, a separate audio device, again, connect to a microphone, have that in, but that means you've got two mics, if you've got comms as well. Um, so the Senna, it just does all of that, and it does make, you know, footage, you know I'm messing about when you come back, having to sync the audio or anything else, just literally, you know, you can get the, get the card, plug it in, there is an app, you can, if you're just doing one camera, you can edit it straight from the app, um, add music and, and, and everything, or just pull it straight into your computer, edit in something like Premiere Pro or DaVinci or Final Cut, whichever it is you want to use. Um, again, the Insta comes with an app and it also has a desktop app as well. Uh, I prefer the actual mobile app, but that makes life a little bit easier because I've got the Z Fold 4, so quite a bit of space on there. And it is so easy to use, that you know, as you're watching it back and, and you can do the... Um, deep uh, track on there and you just add the keyframes so like I say it, it, if you did it in Premiere um, it'd probably be easier for, for matching it at the same time but for me I just find it just as easy to you know as you're watching the footage back that you've already decided um, where you're going to go and if you're doing any bits that you're talking about and you want to use them, pe them bits um, you can pick the angles that you want from the 360, set them up in the keyframes, and then just load it in, and then just choose your camera view. So that's what I've done on this one. Um, like I said, there wasn't much to choose from. So that's the uh, that's the footage from all three. Um, see what you think, and certainly leave a comment, leave a like, do a sub. It's the uh, Palette Palace Pompon. Uh, as I said, we're going to be doing different sorts of stuff. So, um, some stuff I'll be doing here from the Palette Palace, or I'll be doing bits when I'm out. This is the first time I've done one where I'm just uh, doing a voiceover, talking over the top of the footage. So, yeah, have a see what you think and, and tell me and let me know. Uh, what are your thoughts? What cameras have you got? What do you prefer? What do you like using? So, um, let's leave it running and, and, and see where we go and I might stick some music on in the background for you to carry on watching the ride and then you can make your own mind up so like subscribe and thanks for watching <laughs>